Oh, it's such a it's such a pleasure to be here today, and and of course, as uh, a bridge company, this is our passion. We love bridges. Uh, we accomplish bridges all over the country. Um, we first uh, heard about the possibility of an East County bridge from David Medor, who shared with us uh, the possibility there and asked us to take a look at it, and we did, and and came up with some ideas and some solutions of what could be achieved. And of course. Uh, Getting to know Kevin Peterson has just been a, a great pleasure because he's a brilliant mind for how transportation works and, and how you make um, grid systems and, and networks and all multimodal possibilities uh, accomplish a great vision for the future. So I want to um, share with you a little bit about philosophy of bridges and also um, share with you some of the bridges that we've done around the country as really resources for what could be done economically and quickly for a new crossing of the Columbia River as one possibility in connecting communities because that's what we are. We're a series of communities with wonderful neighbors and how we connect and, and uh, make those passageways to our jobs, to our families, to the excitement that we have in the quality of our lives. And certainly more people are coming to this area because the quality of life is so beautiful. And we see the beauty both in the built environment uh, here in Vancouver, uh, just a, a glorious place to be, the natural environment, so pristine, uh, so gorgeous, um, whether it's uh, along the Columbia River or the beautiful greenways. And then in Portland, uh, the built environment there has certainly attracted a number of people to want to come and live in the Portland area, as well as its incredible natural beauty. And so uh, for us, um, it's about uh, creating bridges that really respect the built and the natural environment, uh, that coexist in a way in which uh, you can uh, benefit the communities through um, better bridges. So we've been doing this for 39 years uh, throughout the United States, 42 states and six countries. And we really accomplish bridges in a holistic way, looking at it from design, uh, planning, inspection. We develop bridges and we build bridges. So uh, the bridges you're going to all see here are bridges we've accomplished with our company. And uh, it, it demonstrates that you can do them economically and really with an environmentally friendly approach to touching lightly on the land. So uh, our, our bridges have received 366 awards for our customers and they've all built, been built because they were the best value, the lowest cost, um, a very small footprint. And these are some of the resources because with any bridge across the Columbia River, you're, you're crossing over water, you're crossing over land, you're uh, connecting into landscapes, and you're respecting that environment. Um, our customers also have three presidential awards through the National Endowment for the Arts. The President of the United States has given this award only five times for bridges. Um, and uh, the two that you see on your right for the National Park Service were all accomplished because they were the lowest cost solution. But they also contributed to the environment in a special way with unique design. Roads and Bridges Magazine came out with the best of all time of bridges, going back to the Brooklyn Bridge and the Golden Gate, and some really fabulous bridges. And we're really excited that six of our bridges um, were uh, given that, that honor. Uh, you may recognize some of them. Uh, downtown Boston, um, the Skyway Bridge in Tampa, and a wonderful cable stay bridge uh, down at the bottom that we did in Maine. If you ever go to Maine, that's a great place to visit because it hosts the tallest public observatory on a bridge in the world. And the whole bridge was $85 million. So uh, if you like to, if you are really have a secret passion as a bridge geek, um, you might want to check out the History Channel Modern Marvels or Nova Specials because our bridges have been featured on seven television shows. So when it comes to bridges, we have to think about our landscapes and what the bridge is there to achieve. Uh, not only vehicles, but for pedestrians, for multimodal participation, uh, the, the environmentally sensitive nature, uh, the urban landscape, long spans, sometimes we need cable supported structures to uh, have a longer span uh, between piers, um, and long bridges over water. 
And so in that area, the resources that we bring to be able to share with you the pricing and the structure and the detail um, comes from the fact that we've done more long span concrete bridges in America than any other firm. Uh, whether it's the longest concrete span in Pennsylvania uh, along I-76 or a gateway bridge in Brattleboro, uh, Vermont, which is uh, just about to be finished this summer, or the new I-35W bridge in Minneapolis. Uh, we probably all remember where we were in August of 2007 when the old I-35W bridge collapsed across the Mississippi River. It was devastating because it was uh, rated just under a 50 as structurally deficient. Bridges get a rating from 0 to 100. Once they go below a 50, they start to go on a, a magical list for hope that one day they might get a little funding to be able to be replaced. This one was just under a 48, uh, or just under a 50 at about 48. And it collapsed because it was called fracture critical. That means when one piece of a bridge goes, the whole bridge collapsed. We have a lot of these bridges around the country and we have no funding really available um, to accomplish these very important infrastructure needs. This became an emergency. It was an interstate. And so it was designed and built in just 11 months. A 10 lane interstate across the Great Mississippi River um, with uh, Minneapolis winter going to minus 40 degrees. Um, I was there for about four months as we were accomplishing this project and it was 234 million. So we received a number of awards, but it tells you about the technology that we have today that we can make smart technology. It's a smart bridge with 323 sensors. It was the first to use LED lighting uh, for night. It planned for the future with the pedestrian crossing underneath and it crossed the entire Mississippi River with a new modern um, structure. So just recently, um, this past year, we have several other Mississippi River crossings that were accomplished and you can see what kind of budget those projects had. This was an $82 million project with a 508 uh, foot span and these numbers are going to be related um, to the possible crossing as we take a look at that. Um, also, this uh, main span and side spans for this bridge uh, in um, Minnesota, uh, crossing over to Wisconsin, was a 450 foot main span and this project was $60 million. And then in uh, Utah, this is a, a really wonderful um, bridge because if you've ever been to Arches National Park or the Colorado River, the idea is to create a bridge that just uh, blended with the environment. Uh, so it's important to really respect the opportunity to see our beautiful landscapes. And there are ways to do that with bridges that can be uh, achieved very quickly and also respect the environment. So let's talk about the East County Bridge specifically. Um, the project alignment uh, that you see really started from a visioning study that happened in 2008. And so that is what you see here with this green line. This is a navigation channel, and this is a, a basically an alignment um, scenario that's east of the 205. And so we took a look at that alignment. We said, you know, um, as bridge people, we'd prefer if we could have that alignment go perpendicular to the channel so that you could cross it at a more reasonable span length and you could uh, touch lightly on the land as we cross over um, uh, the land area, which is very sensitive environment. And we have a system that you can build completely from the top to protect the environment. And then cross over and connect with Airport Way. So that was kind of where we started, looking at some ideas and um, what the possibilities would be. And looking in the big picture, you can see uh, Airport Way, of course, connects to the airport. Uh, this is where it would um, connect uh, here from Southeast 192 Second Avenue um, and then connecting eventually to 84. Uh, so we took a really serious look at how this could be, um, be achieved, what size bridge would it need. Um, so let's just call this about 11,000 feet, um, but we got really specific as you can see. We, we spent a lot of time studying this. Um, looking at, at very specific span lengths and how we would cross um, with a 300 foot main span, 144 foot navigational clearance matching what you have at the 205, um, even though we're further to the east. 
really paying attention to how to move vehicles the quickest. You know, sometimes grades um, being more um, uh, easy can help with that. This is just a 2% um, grade, so um, your heavier trucks and vehicles can make it a little easier. Uh, crossing over the railroads um, and also the Evergreen Highway here. And then coming into and being able to cross over Marine uh, Drive and connecting into Northeast um, Airport Way. So you can kind of see just the general layout. Of course, there'd be a lot more need to examine the finesse of that alignment and how it would fit in and tie in. Um, but we developed a lot of plans and details of how that could be achieved. So you start um, perhaps in this alignment at that a bluff. Um, where 192 and State Road 14 intersect and allows that easy crossing over the navigational channel and 2% for trucks and meets all the airport clearances as well. 480 foot spans um, over the navigation channel with a 300 foot horizontal clearance, 144 vertical, the same as 205. Now what you see here with the bridge is um, open piers uh, with a, a small footprint, very long open spans. What this allows us to do is by um, having those twin columns, we eliminate any equipment that has to be in the, in the water to support the superstructure while it's being built and be able to achieve these much longer spans. So it creates openness, it's more efficient, it reduces cost, and uh, touches lightly on the landscape. So uh, spans of 410 feet in other areas create a lot of openness um, through the region. And here is another view. Each time in looking at these circles, you can kind of see where our view was taken. Uh, this is a little bit further back. You can see um, the trail um, can then interface with the bridge for the least footprint. Uh, you may notice that kind of underneath the, um, the very top of the bridge, which is where the vehicles would go, we have tucked up underneath a cantilever wing, uh, a multi-use pedestrian bicycle facility that would occur on both sides. That would be protected from the weather, but still give you an opportunity to really enjoy um, crossing the Columbia River and those beautiful scenic views. Uh, there can be overlooks and you know all kinds of opportunities um, along the way. So this would have um, four lanes, um, two in each direction with very large shoulders, uh, 10 foot and eight foot. Um, and then you can kind of see the pedestrian experience underneath, uh, giving lots of, of height and width. Um, I actually uh, took a trip to um, Australia a number of years ago and uh, an experience that they do a lot of this over there where you're underneath the cantilever so you're not mixed in with the traffic. Um, you have your own kind of pristine, quiet view of the, the region. And I just loved that experience as I was biking those bridges and thought, you know, this is something we need to do more of. Um, so this also allows us to have less width in terms of right of way because we don't um, expand more outward, we're kind of bringing it underneath. It also reduces our foundation sizes as well, and it all translates into more economy as well as a better experience. So we also looked at several other options for locations, and so there's a lot of different places that this East County Bridge could go. Um, it could go further to the east and connect closer to Troutdale, um, coming from Camas and then down into Troutdale and again kind of connecting with that marine drive. And so you can see um, where that would all translate into this yellow and blue that you're seeing on the right side of the screen. Um, just a little closer look, that could be done in a couple of phases. You know, an immediate phase that connects in and then a more expansive phase. Or it could be done all as one. Um, component phase within that same, same time period. That's about an 8,000 foot long um, bridge. And with every bridge, we believe it is both um, structure and symbol, form and function, and it must be context sensitive and be respectful of, of both the environmental, economic, and the social aspects. 
So our approach is if you decide to do a bridge like this, that we would get the community together, develop a theme, create pure shapes and bridge treatments and railings and lighting and landscaping, really make it not only economical and quick to build, but as a symbol of the community. So one of the example themes uh, was of nature, inspired by Washington and Oregon trees. And here you can see just a, a spin around of what that cross section could look like um, with the open slender piers, um, which are very good for construction as well and openness, and then the pedestrians underneath and your cars above. But what would something like this um, take uh, to get it accomplished? Um, first of all, there would be all, all opportunities for lighting and uh, special ways in which, you know, the bridge could be lit at night. Um, but we took a very serious look at how this would, could be accomplished within a budget and a time period. Um, because we develop bridges and we um, work very closely in design build all the time around the country, um, and we believe in working very quickly to get things accomplished, this project could be accomplished in five years or less open to traffic if you wanted to do it. Uh, the first two years would be the environmental process, final permitting. We just uh, assumed we might have a little longer process because we're going over the Columbia River. Um, but we would certainly try to compact that to an even shorter time period because of the systems that we were putting in place to be very economic, um, environmentally friendly, we think it, there are a lot of good environmental solutions that could be brought to bear with this, with this bridge. Um, but design and build it in just 36 months. Um, so there are ways to get things done very quickly. It's just a matter of that persistence and, and the desire to, um, to have it done. So this is one idea of creating a sustainable East County Bridge as one location to relieve traffic um, very quickly as part of an overall potential grid system that can help with uh, traffic and mobility across the Columbia River. So would you touch on cost? Yes, so on cost, to do this total project, um, we could easily do it in less than $800 million. We know we've heard um, with uh, you know some of the I-5, I was hearing numbers of 2.8 billion and so forth. Um, and, you know, of course, that would take a very long time. But, but really dispersing the traffic and creating a grid and opening up opportunities for uh, people to get to the access instead of funneling, because you get this funneling effect to get to that crossing. And that just jams up traffic on both sides. If you can disperse it more, and really Kevin's the traffic expert here um, on how that all works. Um, but uh, it, it gives you an opportunity for greater access and greater mobility. So there's lots of places you could put the East County Bridge. Um, you know, that could be done working very closely with the communities on each side. Um, but easily within uh, 800 million, um, we could uh, accomplish that whole system.